Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to the seminar with uh, Professor Jin Zhang in East China Normal University, Shanghai. And I met with Professor Zhang in 2015. And uh, Professor Zhang is uh, in the School of Ecological and Environmental Science at East China Normal University in China. Uh, the university hosts position uh, definitely in top five or probably top three in ecological and environmental science in China. Um, Professor Zhang got his PhD from the University of Alberta in Canada in 2013. After that, he had a postdoc experience in University of Alberta and uh, Aarhus University in Denmark. Um, in 2016, he started the professor position at uh, East China Normal University in Shanghai. Professor Zhang's research interests mainly include long-term forest dynamics, species coexistence, macroecology, biodiversity patterns, and the dynamics along elevational gradients. And he has published over 70 papers in PNAS, including in PNAS, Ecological Letters, and the Global Change Biologies of those top journals. Currently, he serves as the deputy editor-in-chief for the journal Biodiversity Science, associate editors for the uh, ecography, and remote sensing in ecology and conservation. So yeah, if uh, our staff have a chance to submit paper to these journals, please feel free to let Professor Zhang know. So today his uh, seminar title is Mountain Plant Diversity in Anthropocene. And that's uh, his work focusing in uh, China in the elevation and the latitude uh, patterns. So I leave that to Professor Zhang. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. So, uh, mm. so just, uh, just initially, Professor Zhang um, tried to make the trip to visit us before yeah. he mm. goes to attend the meet, uh, conference in Coffs Harbor. But unfortunately, due to the schedule problem and the air ticket issues, he couldn't make that. Uh, but anyway, we still have him here online and deliver us the seminar. And hopefully we'll get in a uh, chance in the future to host him visiting in person. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, th thanks Professor Xu and, and uh, uh, for the introduction. And uh, yeah, hope I can find a chance to go to visit the, the university next time. Um, glad to meet uh, everyone online. Uh, so my, my talk today is about the mountain plant diversities, uh, both on focus on the Chinese system, yeah, but also try to uh, look at, at the global or regional scale uh, to have some showcase. Uh, so I would like to start uh, from this code. Maybe I, I think this is a good, uh, the best place to, to start the code from Charles Darwin. Uh, right? Yeah, uh, my, my work has most, most focused on the geographic distribu distributions. This is, uh, uh, as Darwin said, it's the grand subject that almost the keystones of the laws uh, of the creation. Mm. Uh, it's, it's in a letter of Darwin writing to the Hawk uh, in 1845. Uh, I just checked uh, uh, the flora of Aus uh, Australia a few days ago. I just realized actually the, um, uh, the Hawk uh, writes uh, uh, some part for the contributor to the flora of Australia. Uh, uh, this that's really good, good to know. And also interesting is the same year with Darwin published like, the famous book. Uh, uh, also, I when I uh, read uh, this uh, this file uh, last uh, yesterday, I just saw uh, two uh, three paragraphs very interesting. Uh, he mentioned uh, uh, the another guy uh, Wallace. Uh, I know most of uh, you are very familiar. He has a, a paper published in the same year. It's, uh, it's about the Wallacean line. Uh, they mentioned the Malaysian and Australia. Also mentioned that these countries uh, were saved right by the uh, by the Maxair and the former belong to the Australia. So as you know, the Wallacean line. Uh, also is mentioned uh, uh, Darwin's book having published. As uh, at that time, at the end of this year, the, the book is uh, published uh, publicly. Um, so I also want to mention a bit 
about the wall thin line. I think there's something inter interesting between the China, uh, Southeast China, uh, South Southeast East Asia, and the Australia. Yeah, we have a lot of connections with the wall thin line and uh, other geography uh, reasons. It's a very interesting uh, region, I think, uh, to do some com compar comparison studies. Uh, so also uh, this year is Wallace is at the, the uh, 200 birthdays. Um, uh, he's, uh, we call him the father of the biogeography. So he, uh, he has a lot of contributions. Uh, I will not mention that. My work is most uh, actually is related to, uh, to Wallace's work. Um, uh, so for my talk today, I try to uh, separate two, three parts. First is about some uh, very short introduction about some work I do in the global or regional scale, uh, most on the biogeography and the market ecology. And then I will focus, uh, give a short introduction about the mountain diversity in China. Then the last part is about uh, some ongoing work uh, in China about the elevation gradient changes uh, for, the, for the biodiversity. For the most part, I uh, will most focus on the plants, but also Try to cover the different taxon systems to uh, okay start. So for some work I do I did in the last ten years, most of the, as I mentioned, is the first to understand how species are distributed uh, over space. This one example we did we just we not only use the species distribution data, also try to use the remote sensing data. Like, like this one based on the maximum for the cover uh, cover height uh, from space borne lidar to look at the global patterns of the canopy height uh, where where the maximum can be height it is and uh, why it's uh, in this region or there right uh, so look at the uh, precipitation temperature what's the limitations of the tree not grow too high right uh, as you can say the Australia the highest place, uh, in the in the south part, uh, uh, others like uh, I I also try to uh, interesting about how the species responds to the climate change. Uh, uh, is climate change is the only value uh, only variable to drive the change, or still uh, like the, the species composition composition succession, how it affects the patterns. Uh, so we look uh, use uh, large scale patterns from. Uh, uh, most from North America, North America right now, uh, like the U U.S. U.S. Uh, forest inventory data and the Canada's Canada forest inventory data to look at uh, how the species at the training age and the leading age, uh, how the species grows, mortality, and the recruitment change. Uh, it's two papers published uh, one in ten years ago, one just recently. If you are interested, you can take a look. I will not go to the detail here. Um, uh, also, we try to do some modeling to look at how species, how diversity, you know, not only one species, uh, 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 change uh, under the climate and the land use changes. That's uh, one simulation work I did uh, uh, for my postdoc a few years ago. Uh, look at the 7,000 7, plant species in North America, uh, similar to the species reduced modeling for the current climate and the uh, future climate. Look at how the diversity change. You can see in the low uh, low latitude there are a lot of species loss. Uh, in the east part of the North North America, you can see the species green gains. Uh, this region is, uh, also is phylogenetically related. Um, uh, another example I want to show is we also use the uh, 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 thinking use some niche similar species to compare the pattern changes. Like uh, it's uh, also need to go back to Darwin um, in the 1856 in a letter, uh, Darwin wrote to Isaac Ray, uh, the American uh, botanist. Uh, uh, so he said nothing will surprise me more than the greater gen gen genetic and specific of affinity with the East Asia than with the North uh, West Asia, uh, West America. Uh, Isaac Ray did a lot of, uh, did some work in Japan 
compare the Japan flora with the uh, East uh, uh, American and the uh, West uh, American plant is more similar between the, uh, the East Asia flora with the uh, East, East American flora. So this uh, Darwin was wondering. So we, uh, this, it, it, we know it's now called a disjunction species, uh, disjunction journal uh, uh, in the uh, North, uh, North America and uh, the South, uh, China, East China, uh, East Asia, actually they can see a lot of species uh, from the same genre only distributed in these two regions. So we compare how it changed uh, under the different future climate changes and synonymous. Also, uh, we did, uh, I did some more global studies to look at how the plant diversity patterns related to mammals and birds. Together, we divided it to the different tra uh, traffic, traffic groups, look at the connections, is a top down effect or bottom effect, which one is stronger, how it changes, is it provides some insight for the conservation. Okay, that's some example I want to show most at the global scale we did. Uh, to understand the large scale patterns. Uh, so the second part is to try to focus on the mountain diversity in China. Um, for why mountains, I think it is uh, uh, for the ecologists, it's very easy to understand. We, we can also uh, at least track back to the Wen uh, in the 200 years ago, at, in the 1807. He climbed the Chimborazo and the record all the species and the look at look at the how the species change along the elevations. Uh, I think three years, uh, four years ago, uh, science published a special section to celebrate uh, to uh, to celebrate Humboldt's uh, birthdays. Uh, birthday also uh, have some very uh, great interviews. Uh, reveals about how the Humboldt's idea still to under, help us to understand the current uh, biodiversity patterns or the climate change issues. Uh, so for the elevation gradient around the, the uh, uh, of species, you can say, we usually think it's the half shape patterns, but uh, in different patterns, uh, different mountains, we actually see the quite different patterns for, also for the different uh, Hexan groups, the pattern could be quite different. Like the, this example from Africa, uh, he did uh, the, the, the research group from Germany did uh, a research for 25 uh, plants and animal taxon. As you can see here, uh, they see the different patterns here. So it's really hard to understand. And uh, it's quite, uh, uh, but it's very interesting to further to dig into to understand the general patterns to drive the different patterns, uh, the different different patterns, right? Mm. Okay, also uh, elevation gradient is a good uh, is a good way, I think a good system for to test some climate change issues uh, like this one. Uh, hey, uh, the team from the Aarhus University in Denmark they did some revisit the Humboldt sites uh, uh, service in the 1802 and, uh, and found a lot of species actually upshift uh, about 500 meters on average in two, uh, 200 years. So it's quite a large range shift. Uh, uh, they didn't do too much analysis on how is it related to climate, but uh, quite I think is uh, climate change and the land cover all contribute, uh, contribute to, the, to the range shifts. So uh, the elevation gradient do give us some signals to understand, uh, to understand the pat the process under uh, under the uh, patterns, right? As you, as you can see, yeah, uh, like like uh, what the this code said, elevation gradient can be a nature experiment and the text bears to for the future biodiversity uh, in a changing world. So globally, actually, there are a lot of mountains. Uh, other, especially you can show in the Asia, uh, uh, there are quite a lot of the mountains, uh, mountains here. Uh, also Australia, you see all the mountain in the east part. So China has quite a lot of mountains. There's some mountains 
the names in Chinese, but as you can see, the, there are a lot of mountains uh, across almost all of China. We, uh, we usually spread China to three stairs. We call it. A, so the first stairs is the Himalaya regions. It's over, most mountains is over 4,000 meters. Uh, the second, uh, second stairs uh, is from about uh, 1,000 meters to 4,000 meters. And uh, in the east part, most part uh, is uh, most uh, most region is lower than the one thousand uh, one thousand meters, but you still can see a lot of mountains is uh, actually over two thousand meters. So compared to China and Australia, to the size uh, quite close. Uh, uh, also, the flora uh, uh, as I as I know for Australia is about. Uh, 20,000, right? 20,000 20, plants, uh, vascular plant species. For China, is about uh, 35 uh, plant species. Uh, Chinese botanists actually do quite a, a lot of work to uh, have the flora, flora data. Uh, service is uh, uh, like a, as this table show is uh, we parent the plant is 32,000 plant species. Uh, is about uh, 10% of the, glo uh, the global for, uh, flora. Also for other for animals, you also for most uh, read, uh, most uh, most uh, tax taxon groups is also 10% in China. So it's uh, uh, this work uh, for the flora part, which is take about a, uh, half a century, and uh, over 200 teams working together published uh, over 100 uh, 120 26 volumes uh, for the flora for the China uh, flora of China. Now it's, fi it's finished about 10 years ago. Uh, okay, another thing I, I want to mention uh, about, about uh, the China, the special part of China is uh, called the Hu Line. Uh, it's from the uh, here, you can say in the Northeast China, he, uh, or to the, to the south, uh, Southeast um, uh, in, in Yunnan province. This line divides China to two parts, right? As you can see, this is one line. Uh, um, by by who addressed by who in uh, about one hundred years ago, uh, and uh, uh, he's a senior. He was a senior professor in, in, our, in our university. Uh, he mentioned most people actually in China live the uh, in this region in East part is a ninety six percent. Only four percent uh, percent of the population size is in the East part. The, the size is uh, near the same, but the population is really different. Uh, uh, even now, it's still very similar. Still, most people in this uh, this side. So that's uh, uh, it's also influenced, I think, the biodiversity patterns. Also, the uh, uh, a lot of other uh, other things. So uh, also from the light uh, nightlight map, we also can see right there are very strong human disturbance in east part. Um, uh, I, uh, I would like to give two very short examples about uh, how the human disturbance uh, shapes the Chinese, Chinese mountain systems. One example is uh, from the um, Wilson. I'm not sure you guys are familiar with uh, this guy or not. Yeah, actually, about 100 years ago, uh, a lot of foreigners come to China to collect the uh, specimens and uh, move some species to the gardens in Europe and uh, the North America. Um, Wilson is one one of the famous guy. He uh, in he collect uh, over six six five thousand specimens and uh, move uh, one thousand six hundred species uh, species and endemic species to the to the gardens in Euro Europe and North America. So uh, you can see a lot of Chinese plant, uh, Chinese plants in this gardens actually uh, is uh, kind of related to this, this plant counters. Yeah, uh, he has a book called the China Mother of Gardens. Uh, at the beginning, he actually tried to search for this species, dog tree, and uh, uh, after that, he also collected other species. Um, so the Wilson's story actually, uh, he Wilson take a lot of pictures uh, at that time. Well, one thousand years later, another guy, Chinese guy, Professor Yin, actually tried to revisit all the sites uh, he can found of the Wilson's. Uh, like this picture is Wilson uh, take the take the picture in the 1908, and uh, 100 years ago you look at the same 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 area, right? It's quite similar similar 
the vegetation seems didn't change too much. Uh, but uh, after eight years ago, when she, when he visited here again, changed a lot, right? So uh, the issue for the for the China's mountain mountain areas, I think, is not only the climate change, also the nature succession is also the human disturbance could be contribute a lot to understand uh, the changes. Another ex example from Lushan uh, in the central China, uh, Jiangxi province, uh, two pictures also 100 years ago by the foreigners in the 1,000 uh, meters in the, in the Lushan mountain. Uh, uh, it's very, some old, 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 old buildings here, as you can see, yeah. Um, but now when, when I visit the Lushan in recent last year or before, yeah, you can say it's because during the tourist there are human, there are really large human disturbance. Uh, also a lot of plantations, as you can see. Um, uh, another thing, uh, another uh, from this old picture and the recent picture, the same place in Lushan also you can see the trees actually grows a lot, right? in the 50 years. So uh, it's kind of complex if you want to understand the change for the plants or other other species, uh, right? You have to include uh, the natural reasons and also some human human reasons together. Um, all right, uh, so uh, I, I don't want to take too much time on the uh, mountain diversity, uh, mountain diversity. Uh, so for uh, China's uh, the ex system, uh, I know. So if you want more details about how the China's the ex system change from north to the south, uh, uh, you should find more information online. But uh, next part, I will try to focus on the elevation changes uh, along the biodiversities. This is one project uh, we initiated about uh, seven, uh, six years ago. Actually, we call it the best project. The, the name, uh, full name is biodiversity along the elevation gradients and how it shifts and uh, transitions. For shifts, we try to understand not only the species range shifts, also the regime shifts for the tra transitions. We mean the ecosystem transitions, how the how it changes. And so we did the long term monitoring for a lot of mountains in China. So uh, since the four core part, uh, four uh, core elements to uh, for the best project compared to some elevation work they have done in China or other reason for, we think the long-term monitoring is a key part uh, to track the changes. Uh, another thing is we, uh, we not only want to focus on plants, uh, uh, separate, separately we, uh, we want to include different taxons together to uh, understand it as a system, uh, as a food, food webs, uh, another thing we think is important is uh, my climate more monitoring. Yeah, uh, and because most species uh, actually live very small area, uh, so we need uh, more detailed climate data to understand uh, the diversity patterns. Uh, another thing is a coordinated distribution network. For if we only focus on one mountain, it's really hard to get the general patterns. Uh, so we try to use the uh, same uh, standard protocol to the field work and do some com compar comparisons. So best, uh, as I mentioned, the, the initial is uh, uh, seven years, uh, six years ago. And uh, currently we have six uh, 16 mountains working together with uh, over 20 institutes in China most, uh, mostly. Um, also over nearly about 300 field sites in, in different mountains. Um, um, let me see. Uh, more at the beginning, we mostly try to focus on the subtropical regions because that's the region uh, Shanghai locked in. Uh, so we are more familiar and more have more data on this region. Uh, after a few years, uh, we also explore it to the north part and the south part to include the tropical region and the temperate regions. So this is the. Uh, um, the, the figure showing the where our sizes are for based on the Whitaker's biomes. As you can see, we covered quite a lot of different ecosystems. Uh, don't have much size and the tropical rainforest. Uh, 
and uh, the deserts, but the other system actually, actually you can see we most cover most uh, a lot. So fast, as I mentioned, we try to uh, understand in different uh, uh, in different ways the species range change the ecosystem and uh, how the biodiversity related to the function um, and the evolution, also data sharing. So I uh, want to introduce a bit more about uh, uh, the subtropical regions because I think it's very, very unique uh, globally. Mm, the black regions, as you can see, we call the evergreen, broadly the forest. Uh, globally, it's a really large area in the East Asia, also some in the, in the Australia, uh, Australia part of the New Zealand. Globally, at the same latitude, as you can see, this part have a much larger area com uh, uh, compared to the uh, others, other regions as the forest. That's because the Himalaya and the Mosul the affected. So subtropical region in China actually cover a large range, as, as I mentioned, also one quarter of the uh, area and the one third of plant species uh, are there also very high endemic plant species also in the in these regions. So there's some some pictures. Uh, as you can show, uh, show uh, you can see for the every green for the leaves forest. Uh, so now I try to cover, uh, give, uh, show some pictures for the different mountains from north, uh, from north China, uh, north China to the south China. Um, this this one, the one north part, uh, the north side from the Changbai Mountain is near the North Korea. Uh, the elevation range is over two thousand meters. Uh, you can see the vegetation changes from the Top, uh, bottom to top. Also, there's another mountain in Xinjiang, uh, Xinjiang province, the West Tianshan, Tianshan Mountain. Uh, is a quite a cold area. Um, the, at the bottom, you can see the wild apple is uh, the, or, uh, the or, uh, original place of the uh, parent the apple eat. Uh, also, the pine uh, conifer species and the very diversity uh, system. But the by the plant diversity, uh, is very low here. Also, this uh, uh, another mountain actually is uh, between the temperate forest, uh, temperate regions and the subtropical regions, Dabieshan. And this uh, go, going north, uh, south, uh, we can see more evergreen species like this one in Jiangxi province and from uh, in Chongqing. And also, it's uh, very high diversity. The dwarf species I mentioned before. Uh, that's in the in the Yunnan province, south uh, southwest. Uh, it's a very large nature reserve in China, and now it's uh, uh, trying to move to to the national parks. Uh, have very high diversity like for the plants. They have over seven plant uh, seven thousand plant species in this mountain, and um, also some even some large uh, large animals. Uh, Named recently. Uh, There's another another mountain in Yunnan. It's totally different landscape with, as we see for the Gaoligong. Um, this this is uh, one elevation uh, plot we are we are trying to establish the, now in Tibet. Uh, you can also see some more uh, different landscapes. Okay, this is in the tropical regions in China. China have quite small tropical regions in Hainan and Yunnan province. Um, right, this uh, one mountain I work most in the central China is uh, not too far from Shanghai. It's about two hours to three hours by drive. Uh, it's a wild uh, jingle species, as you can see, they call it wild, uh, but uh, it's actually kind of not not very sure it's wild or not. Um, also, they have very large trees in this uh, small, small nature reserves. Also, the diversity is quite high. Mm. In, in the mountain top areas, over, over 1,000 meters, you can uh, uh, also see the snows. 
in this region. That's, that's what, what surprised me at the beginning because uh, um, it's very, very warm in this region. So the snow also could affect, I think, uh, the diverse patterns. Uh, also, they have some critical endangered, endangered species uh, like this one. Uh, in TM, in TM, only five adult individuals uh, right now, uh, alive here. As you can see, one, two, three, four, and another one near the road. Uh, so um, when you look at the habitat of, for this species, uh, uh, you can see it's actually a bamboo forest around and a lot of human disturbance, uh, also some some buildings around. So uh, it uh, kind of kind of makes some challenging to uh, for the species conservation. Okay, for the best project, uh, we did a lot of work together. Like uh, here is just some work I uh, list, but not limited on this. So we not only fo focus on plants, also try to uh, collect information for the soil, butterfly, uh, also insects and others. I will give some example very quickly to show what we are doing for, for the best project right now. Uh, so for the plant survey, this uh, is this, uh, uh, some base, uh, base, basic data for the best. We uh, have a tag for each, each tree and uh, measure the size and height and other information. And as you can see for the different uh, uh, plant groups, the trend around the elevation is different also in the different mountains. Uh, also, we did a uh, plant survey for the understories to uh, try to understand how the uh, forest uh, regenerate um, over time. Also, we did it for the moss and the leaf worms, uh, like use a small plot for, for the tree, we have, have the species information. And for one mountain like the Tian Mushan, um, for the moss, uh, moss survey, uh, we found a four, four or five species and uh, uh, a lot of new re records uh, that that didn't uh, did, uh, is is quite surprising because for the Tian Mountain actually it, uh, we have done a lot of history data is very uh, close to our university a lot of university go to this mountain to do the uh, surveys starting 40, 40 years ago but uh, as as a one year state survey based uh, based on what we did have much more uh, new records compares all the data we they collected in last in last forty years. So uh, so uh, this means there are a lot of bias on the sampling effort, like the, for the for the small species, uh, small size species like the liverworts and the mosses. For butterfly, we are using different bias, the bananas and the fish collect the. Uh, to look at the, how the butter, butterfly diversity change along the uh, elevations. There's some butterfly mm, species uh, we captured in Tian Mountain. Uh, what we learned from three years, three, three years data collection for the butterfly, which is the insect diversity change a lot over seasons and over years. It's really hard to understand with very short term data. Uh, and that's that's what we do uh, mostly in, in most uh, areas. We only do one year data uh, collection to look at the patterns. I think it could be uh, have a lot of issues, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, also, it's for the soil microbes. We also found that the microclimate actually change uh, play a big role to understand the micro um, uh, soil microbe diversity patterns. Mm, so your fauna is just uh, one project, uh, one sub project that we started uh, last year. Uh, it's still to the uh, to the ID thing right now. It's quite uh, uh, still need uh, some time to get all the species identified. Also for the amphibians, uh, uh, our colleagues uh, are, uh, did uh, did uh, in the uh, one month for the amphibians. Um, look at the changes. Uh, one more thing I want to say is about the microclimate. Uh, this one paper published uh, two years ago using U European forest data uh, to mention the, how the microclimate is important to understand the uh, biodiversity. 
Uh, also, I want I want to say uh, I totally agree with that. As you can see, we use for the large scale pattern, uh, we usually use use the data like the world climate or Chelsea. Uh, but it's not really can uh, can represent the really changes of the under under the forest. Um, so so it's very easy easy to understand. I I gave a very simple example here, like the uh, this, this island uh, in Canary Islands. Uh, it seems very dry, but they have the wines here, very famous wines here. Uh, you, when, the, when I dig in, I just say, oh, they, they plant the plants like this to, to make wine. So the small areas, the small habitat, that are important uh, so for the plant to survive and for other other taxons, I believe. So that's the difference between the macro refrigerator and the micro macro uh, So based on our data, uh, in the mountains, we also see the climate variations. Actually, it's quite important to understand these patterns. Uh, this uh, three lines show the air temperature in open area, in fo under forest and the soil. You can see the change, the change over seasons. When we compare the summer and the winter together, uh, you can see in the summer the soil temperature is lower, and the, in the winter the so soil temperature is higher, and the air temperature. So that could uh, for uh, could uh, help a lot of small animals and plants to survive maybe in the winter time, right? Mm. So we will do the, some remote uh, remote uh, sensor data collections like the drone survey we did in in uh, in Tian 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 Mountain. Okay, I just uh, go through very quick. See the difference. This one picture we take in the autumn, so the color changes. So the diff different species, so the different colors. Uh, so for jingle, other species. Um, so uh, we uh, uh, we use it to uh, use this information to do the species identification on the large scale. Uh, we also do the lidar thing to get some canopy structure uh, informations. Also, another example is about the leaf herbivores. Uh, we do the, when we do the understory survey, we, try, uh, we include this part in to under, understand how the leaf herbivore rates change over mountains and over seasons. Uh, another thing I think is also interesting, I, I want to say is, uh, is uh, that a uh, recent work that started this year by a group from the Xifeng Banna Botanical Garden in, in South China, in Yunnan, uh, by Aki's group. Uh, he actually studied and worked in Australia for over 10 years. Um, and he also have one project to compare the Australia mountains and the Chinese mountains, uh, that, I think for the insect diversity. But uh, unfortunately, they, they, that project uh, didn't uh, continue a few years ago for some reasons. So he just start use our best data, uh, best uh, network to collect the end data uh, at a different uh, canopy, uh, canopy height. Let's see, show this is a video. Uh, this is a tool they use to collect the data. You can see. Mm -hmm. They just put the bite, uh, go to the canopy top, <laughs> and uh, wait a few hours to collect the ends. Okay. Always before you shoot, the make sure the line is not tangled. Okay. This. Yeah. Mm. So I think this is an interesting way to uh, do some end uh, samplings and other uh, canopy related work. Okay. Also, uh, for the I think for the elevation gradient, we not only based on the ob observation, we also can do some experience. So this year we also try to do some experience work, uh, transplant, transplant, uh, transplant experiments. Uh, 
we use some uh, two altered species to just start this work to look how it's changed if when you move it out out of its range. Uh, this actually inspired by one book published by Princeton recently. Also, when you have the data for the different taxons together, so you can see, as, as I uh, mentioned at the beginning, you can see the different patterns. Uh, right, this one mountain in the uh, in Yunnan uh, for different uh, taxons pattern are different. Um, also, this uh, our result from the Tian Tian uh, Also, you can see uh, different patterns. So next step, uh, when we have the enough data for soil and the climate, what we are uh, run, uh, do uh, want to do right now is uh, to understand the drivers over that. So with that, we have some publications for different taxons. Try to understand that I will not uh, go to the details. Um, that's one example we uh, link with, uh, for one mountain, we link the different taxon, uh, taxonomic diversity with the existing more functions after the last year in ecology. Uh, also, uh, we also contribute the data to some global studies like the soil tem temperature network. Uh, we contribute our mountain data, uh, mountain, mountain climate data uh, to, um, more, to get the global maps of soil temperatures and others. So uh, we also share the data uh, to this. Uh, with that, I think uh, I want to thank a lot of people, at least here or not, yeah, to, hear, to help us to build up the Best, uh, best project. Uh, with that, I would uh, thanks all for listening. If you have any questions and suggestions, I also, uh, if you want something to know more about the best uh, project or some uh, China's ecosystems, yeah, and I, I, I would like to, uh, I'm, I'm happy to discuss more. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We cannot hear you, Professor Xu. Uh, you are unmute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I have one question about those new mm -hmm. species you discovered in West Temu Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, are they new to this region or they are new, uh, totally new species which was never discovered anywhere else before? Oh, it's, it's mostly new, new to this, this province. Uh, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. that have some indications like these species probably have been migrated or started yeah, 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 yeah. in these areas. Yes, yes. Uh, it's all, so is uh, the reason is quite complex. One reason is the sampling effort issue. Another thing, yeah, is just a migrate from other regions. Yeah, we use some, we select some, some species to do the uh, uh, close monitoring to understand it right now. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Any question? Do other people online have more questions? Uh, and if no, if no questions, we thank Professor Zhang uh, for his uh, great seminar and especially all those nice pictures on uh, introducing us some work in China and the beautiful app ecosystems there. So hopefully next time we will get him in person to visit us. Okay, so thank if you. you mm. have any um, information you want to get uh, to get more information about the uh, the group's work, just feel free to contact and uh, have a browse of those websites with the data and the project information. Great, thank you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you, you very much. Yeah, mm. bye. Mm. Thanks so, so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you.